So for those of you who do not know, I collect and build custom mechanical keyboards. Recently, I discovered a curated list of completely open source keyboard designs, and it got me really interested. I started looking at the actual PCBs and how they're designed, and it was just really fascinating. And I thought the more and more I looked at them, the more and more that it's possible for me to maybe even make my own PCB and make my own um, keyboard completely from scratch. Uh, and do a whole lot of learning along the way about how to make PCBs. So like any good tinkerer, I decided that I would design a very small prototype. So for this, I decided to do a two by two macro pad. Total four keys, shouldn't be too hard, but it would teach me at least the basics of PCB design. So I designed the PCB in KiCad, and then after I designed it in KiCad, I sent it off to a pro PCB prototyping manufacturer, um, JLC PCB. And after about a week, I got my boards back from JLC PCB, and when I got them back, I decided to give them a real quick glance over to see, you know, where I was and see how everything turned out. And everything looked good, except um, I don't know how I did this, but I forgot to actually connect the column lines uh, for the keyboard. So, yeah, I could have used botch wires to connect the columns, but I just decided I was going to scrap them, <laughs> modify the files just a little bit to connect those columns and send them off for manufacturing again. After I did that, again, it took about a week for them to come back, and this time, they had all the connections the way I needed them to. Now, I reached the next hurdle. As you all can probably tell from the footage so far, all of these components that go on this macro pad, I decided to use all SMD components. Um, so that's surface mount, and surface mount is notoriously harder to solder. It's not impossible, um, but it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, so I decided that I was going to use the solder paste method, but I realized without the stencil It was really hard for me to place the solder and when I tried using the solder paste method and roughly guessing um, None of the components really lined up properly when I did melt the solder paste uh, So I just decided to hand solder most of the components um, And then save the solder paste soldering for the most difficult components Which for me to solder were the crystal and the actual Atmega microcontroller itself Unfortunately, while I was soldering, I realized that the diodes that I ordered from DigiKey were actually the wrong size. Um, so I couldn't use them, they wouldn't fit on the pad, so I had to do a plan B, and I just used some through-hole diodes that I had from a previous um, electronics project. With everything else soldered, the last thing I had to do was solder on the actual switches themselves. Um, for this, I decided to use some Kiwi switches, um, just because they fit the PCB green color and I just had a few of them laying around from a previous keyboard build that I had just completed not too long before. Now that the macro pad was completed, I was able to connect it to my computer and flash on the firmware I wrote. So after flashing, I opened up a key tester and it worked. Um, it was only a total of four keys, but nevertheless, it did work. Uh, so now that I knew that I had the basis of a keyboard down, I realized that making a larger keyboard would mostly just be expanding the size of the matrix. So with all the lessons and designs that I figured out with the macro pad, all I had to do was basically just scale it up for the larger size. So I fired up KiCad and I decided that I was gonna start on the 65% keyboard. Basically I was able to use the complete schematic from the, from the macro pad, I just had to expand the matrix. After I expanded the matrix, I moved on to the component placement. Now I had a lot more components now because I had way more keys and so placing each one of them took time, especially because I wanted them to line up well so that way when I got the keyboard produced it would they would line up correctly and keycaps wouldn't conflict with each other. Um, but after that, it was on to placement of diodes, one per switch, which did take a while, and then routing. Now, when I did the routing, I did a horrible job. Um, I've never really done advanced PCB wiring. I mean, this would be the second time I ever tried to form wired connections on a PCB. Um, and so I didn't really feel like putting in too much energy um, to make sh because I really wanted to get this created quickly for this video. Um, so I kind of just threw things together and put vias all over the place. And it looks horrible, but I told myself I will fix it in a future revision, and I will. Once all my horrible routing was done, I exported all my Gerber files and sent them off to JLC PCB and got on them to get them manufactured. I also opted to have some of the ICs assembled by JLC just because they were a little bit difficult when I was hand soldering them and I didn't want to have to fight with it the second time um, when I got the actual full boards back. A week or so later and I had my new PCBs. After a real quick visual inspection, I looked and I didn't really see any sort of issues. Um, so I decided that I was going to go ahead and solder on the remaining components that I didn't have JLC assemble for me and then I could get to testing the keyboard. Um, as a side note, the diodes that I ordered that were the correct size this time, they somehow got lost in the mail. 
Um, so I just, again, had to go with the through-hole component diodes that I had plenty of extras of, um, but ideally, and in a future revision, I definitely will make sure that I have the SMD diodes on there. While soldering and inspecting, I actually realized that some of my ground connections weren't connected properly, and also I realized that I didn't even connect the entire bottom row. Um, not sure what happened there. I had the pin mapped out in KiCad, but I just forgot to route it before I sent them off for assembly. To fix all these connections issues, I temporarily used some botch wire, and in future revisions, I'll make sure to actually connect the traces properly. After I finished connecting all the botch wires, I soldered up the rest of the ICs, and here's how it looks. Now, I know it's not the prettiest Wobotech PCB, um, but hey, it's a prototype, and I am still learning after all, I think. Anyway, I flashed my custom QMK firmware onto the board, because that I do know how to do, and it worked. While I was testing all the rows and columns, I actually did run into another really big error, and it's on the bottom row. The fact is, I only have one row when I should have two. Um, because I only have one row, I have some keys that are mapped to the same row and the same column, which basically just duplicates the key, and then I don't have room for all the keys to actually be mapped, so some of them are duplicates and some of them just don't plain work. All in all, I still made something. I mean, a month and a half ago, I had zero knowledge about how to make a PCB, and now I have this right in front of me. Like, does it look fantastic? No, by no means. Does it follow engineering standards? Probably not. Um, but it's still cool because I made it, and that's awesome. I'm currently working on all the revisions that I both want and need to make before I send them off for a second run. And once I finish making all those revisions, I will send them out and get them produced. Once I get the second revisions of boards in, I will go through them again and I will make another video documenting some of my process and how the journey is going so far. Well, that's it for this video. If you like this video and you can't wait to see part two, please do leave me a like and subscribe to the channel um, for more updates on this series and just other coding stuff and things. All right, until next time, see ya.